I've seen a lot of people really excited about the Steam Deck, but who are also pretty unfamiliar with Linux. Their curiosity about how to move files between the Steam Deck and their Windows PC is obviously justified. Some folks have tried connecting their Steam Deck to their computer with a USB cable, but as of right now, that unfortunately won't work. But I have a surefire way that I'm going to share with you in this video. Before we start, if you have a game open on your deck right now, make sure that you save your game before you continue, otherwise you could lose some progress. The first thing that we're going to do is prepare our Steam Deck. Tap the Steam button and then open the power menu. From here, select Switch to Desktop. Now, if you plan on copying a few files every now and then, you can use Warpinator. It's a fast and graphical way of copying files back and forth between Windows and Linux. On your Steam Deck, open up the Discover app and type Warpinator into the search field and go ahead and install this. Meanwhile, on your PC, install Winpinator, the Windows version of Warpinator. There's a link below to download that. Once you have these two apps installed and running on both machines, you should be good to go. If they're running on the same network, they should have found each other automatically. On either machine, select the recipient, and then select either Send Files or Send Folders. Pick the item that you want to send, and then uh, on the other machine, hit the check mark to approve the incoming file. It's pretty straightforward, but this method does have a few drawbacks. First, it requires the Warpinator clients to be running on both machines. And while, yes, you can add Warpinator as a non-Steam game, eh, Warpinator isn't my preferred way of doing this. And before anyone says, well, what about KDE Connect? Well, that's not available on the Steam Deck yet. But if you want constant access to your Steam Deck's files from your PC, we can dive into the Linux terminal and run three commands to get us set up. Then on Windows, we can mount the Steam Deck's files as a lettered drive in File Explorer. Let's get this started. For the next few steps, you might want to have a keyboard connected to your Steam Deck. If you don't have a keyboard that you can use, you'll need to use the on-screen keyboard provided by Steam in desktop mode. Now you can open the on-screen keyboard at any time by holding the Steam button and pressing the X button. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is open the start menu down in the lower left hand corner of the screen and then in the search bar type console starting with a K. If you've ever heard anyone talk about the terminal, this is it. But don't worry, we're going to have some fun. Now, out of the box, desktop mode does not have a password set, so we're going to have to create a password. If you've already set a password, you don't need to change it and you can just skip this step. But if you need to set a password, if you've never done this before, go ahead and follow this next step. So now we're going to type in the command passwd or passwd and then we're going to press the enter key. Now if you've already set a password it's going to ask you for your current password first. Go ahead and follow the instructions that this command will spit out to you. Now you're going to type in a secure password here and this is going to be one you want to remember. And note here that you won't see anything on the screen as you're typing in your password. This is a security feature of Linux. So now we have our password set up and that's great. The next step is to actually set up SSHD or the secure shell daemon. Daemon is another word for host or service. Let's run the command sudo systemctl start sshd. You should be asked for your password and again, you won't see anything as you type it in. This is normal. Once you've typed in your password, press enter. Okay. So now our Steam Deck is listening for incoming connections on our network. However, we have a choice here. The SSH service is actually going to be stopped and won't automatically be restarted again if the deck goes to sleep. We can enable auto starting the SSH service, but if you plan on connecting to untrusted networks with your Steam Deck, like going out to a coffee shop or something like that, this will be a security issue. So if you know that you're only going to connect to networks that you trust with your Steam Deck, Go ahead and enable auto starting for now. Use the command sudo systemctl enable sshd. One more thing to keep in mind is it's good practice to disable the ssh daemon once you're done copying files. And you'll find the command to disable ssh at the end of this video. Uh, we're almost ready to get things started on our desktop, but we need one more thing from our Steam Deck. We need to know its IP address. If you already know your Steam Deck's IP address, you can skip this step. In your terminal, type in IP space ADDR, and you should see something like 2 colon WLAN 0, and then underneath it, you should see INET and then an IP address. This would be something like 192.168.1.171 or something to that effect. 
This number could be very similar to the one you see here on screen, only the last three digits changed, or it could be quite different. It really depends on your network environment. But now our Steam Deck is all set up and we know how to access it. So let's switch over to our Windows PC and make sure that we can actually log in. On your PC, open up PowerShell. To do this, hit the Start menu and start typing PowerShell. From here, we're going to type into the command line SSH space deck and then the at symbol and then the IP address of your Steam Deck. Then go ahead and press enter. Now, you'll see a lot of stuff pop up on screen and it should say something like the authenticity of host IP address can't be established. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? While this might seem scary, this is entirely normal and it's a good sign that we did everything correct in the previous steps. So go ahead and type in yes and then hit enter. Then it will ask you for the password that we just set up on the deck, so go ahead and enter your password as well and hit enter. Great, so now we know that the Steam Deck is responding to remote requests. Now we can close PowerShell and we're almost done. In the description of this video, you're going to find links to two tools that are going to help Windows actually access the Steam Deck's storage. Go ahead and open both of these links, navigate to the Releases tab, and then download the latest versions. Depending on when you're watching this video, you might need to download a later version of this app, these applications, but that should be okay. Once you've downloaded both of these small applications, you should install WinFSP first and then SSHFS-Win second. Now that we have these two programs installed, open up File Explorer and click Computer. At the top of this window, you should see Map Network Drive. Select this and pick a drive letter. In the folder field, type in backslash backslash sshfs backslash deck at IP address of your Steam Deck. So now click finish and you should be asked for your username and your password. Go ahead and use deck in the username field if it's not already pre-populated and use the password that we set up for the Steam Deck. And now you should have access to your Steam Deck. You can copy files to and from it like it was a local drive on your computer uh, as long as your Steam Deck's online. A few things that I should mention though. Your Steam Deck needs to be on in order to copy files to and from it. Copying files to or from your deck won't keep it awake, so you might want to temporarily change its sleep timeout settings. If you'd like to have this tutorial be kind of a set it and forget it thing, I'd recommend setting up a static IP address on your Steam Deck. There are multiple ways of doing this, but I'm not going to go over each of them here. If you enable auto starting SSHD, then you should be able to copy files no matter if you're in game mode or in desktop mode. Also keep in mind that copying massive files while you're playing a game might affect both performance and battery life. And I know I mentioned this before, but I recommend turning off SSHD after you're done. While SSH allows you to copy files, it also allows you to access the deck's terminal remotely. So if you connect to an untrusted network with your deck and you leave SSHD running, someone with your password would be able to do whatever they want with your Steam Deck. Use the command sudo systemctl stop sshd and sudo systemctl disable sshd to shut the service off. And also keep in mind that this is only going to give you access to the internal storage and not the SD card. And finally, I would recommend adding console as a non-Steam game so that you can access it from game mode as well as desktop mode. Well, I think that might do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, hit that like button. It lets other people who are having the same issue find this video and solve it for them too. Also, if you're a Steam Deck owner, or you will be soon, subscribe to the channel. We're doing all kinds of cool stuff here, uh, especially if you're not familiar with Linux, because I think doing a lot of uh, tutorials specifically for the Steam Deck, you know, for end users who aren't familiar with Linux, I think that's something that uh, we really want to start honing in on here on the channel. I want to say thank you to my patrons and my YouTube members, without whom I wouldn't be able to do this. So thanks guys, I really appreciate it. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you want to help the show grow and join the 100 plus other Linux warriors over on Patreon or on my YouTube members, use the links below to get you started. I think that's going to do it for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.